To avoid having my home drone striked or my sponsorships reported to the IRS, I'm attempting to beat Total Warhammer 3 using only squigs. But that begs the question, what are squigs? I don't know. What I do know, however, is that Skarsnik here is quite fond of them, and will be starting off with a grand total of one unit of them. We begin sandwiched between the literal king of pettiness and a man who has spent the last 50 years fighting the most dangerous battles in the world in impressively failed attempts to die. Fortunately, we can... not recruit any units for at least 10 turns. There are two main goals for this campaign. The first is to turn these adorable, useless little spheres into the strongest cavalry that the world has ever seen. And the second is to cleanse the planet of these short, stunty little gits. The shorts, brackets, derogative, as we'll call them, have hunted the squids nearly to extinction. Their incomprehensibly evil reason for doing this is that the squid's primary food source is dwarven children. But what will we eat once the dwarves are gone? That's what the squats would probably be thinking if they were capable of thinking. The one good thing we have going for us here is that our neighbors are fellow green boys who have three separate armies. There's just one problem with that. They want to devour our beautiful, oddly spherical squigs just as much as we want to eat the dwarves. I hope you remembered your blood pressure medication because this problem only has one solution. A metric fuck ton of cheese. We can buff the squigs quite a bit with this banner, and as long as we can make this one unit of squigs kill three units of orcs without taking any damage, we might just stand a chance. Skarsnik has a particularly devious ability called Trixie Traps that gives all units around him invisibility, invisibility but more, and a 24% speed boost. But how does that solve our problem? Even without the speed boost, these squigs are faster than all of their units. Except this one. The Wolf Riders have bows, and if we let them, they'll pop our fragile squigs like fucking balloons. So I buffed the squigs, had them sneak up on the wolves, and killed them. Unlike the fifth attempt. They kept running into the middle of the orcs, who are very much looking forward to having squid for dinner. Eventually, though, we did get them. But the balance of power still looks like this, and if we attack them head-on, we have about a 0% chance of winning. This is where the real cheese begins. By having Skarsnik and his favorite squig taunt the orcs with their delicious bodies, we encouraged one of them to bite off more than they could chew. Thankfully, there is quite genuinely nothing that the squigs can't chew, as their mouths comprise 90% of their bodies. That's quite big. Their charge bonus is the least terrible thing about them, so we devoured these orcs almost instantly. After eating the goblin archers who left the safety of the orcs for no apparent reason, then repeating the process of luring out then murdering their units one at a time, we won this battle with very little damage taken and an absurd 1600 gold value on the squigs, who, for reference, are worth 650 gold. After our glorious victory, we were immediately attacked by their second army. Unfortunately, we're already injured, but fortunately, these are goblins. Unlike orcs, goblins are both conveniently bite-sized and about as durable as cardboard. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, they went so far. And they're all dead too, they're not getting back up either. That is the best charge I have ever seen in this game. Holy fuck. That was way too close. We can now make the squigs even nastier, then eventually buff them even more. The best part is that generic Night Goblin Lords can both ride squigs and unlock both of these bonuses. So once we're able to, you know, recruit anything, we'll be able to buff all of our armies almost instantly. This is extremely necessary because the baseline stats of the squigs are bad. We are extremely vulnerable to all forms of damage, and if left in melee, the squigs will simply lose to most things. Our only three strengths are our charge bonus, armor-piercing damage, and the ability to eat anything smaller than us. The squigs are a tier 3 unit, which would be great if we had a tier 3 settlement to recruit them from. In this case, we need to wait for our population to grow enough to upgrade our settlement, then spend four turns upgrading it, then spend three more turns building up the recruitment building. So we're gonna be sitting here for quite a while. On turn 7, an army of goblins decided to attack us, but our garrison was more than capable of murdering them. As we killed the leader of their faction here, we got the chance to confederate them. Unfortunately, the southern shorts already took most of their territory, but at least we got this one settlement. I would have loved to keep this, but if Thorgrim declares war on us before we can recruit, we will definitely die, so I sold it to him to get a non-aggression pact. On turn 11, the angry dwarves declared war on us, and by turn 13, they attacked us. Why do we win that auto-resolve so well? I'm not entirely sure, but this would not involve squigs, the actual battle, therefore I just want to auto-resolve it. 
Then, by the glorious turn 15, after what feels like years, we can start recruiting some squigs. Very conveniently, before we finished recruiting, Karazakarak broke their non-aggression pact, these random beastmen declared war on us, and yet another faction of shorts decided to attack us. To avoid being completely overrun, we need to kill something immediately. Although it's twice the size of ours, this army is extremely dog shit, so I went for it first. Unfortunately, the AI has evolved quite a bit with the most recent patch, and instead of leaving vulnerable units on the edge of their formation like they used to, they've created an armored mosh pit of death that we can't really flank. By walking around them menacingly though, I got them to adjust their formation and attack the unit of stragglers. I then definitely did not let five of my units get blown into fucking pieces by blasting charges. This was bad, but it did achieve its 100% intended purpose of boosting the dwarves' confidence enough that they started making horrible decisions. They had all of their melee units go over here, and all their range units go over there. So we just ate all of their ranged units, then slowly chewed on the armor of their melee units until they stopped moving. Every single unit of our Valiant Squigs got well over 100 kills, and damn near 1000 gold value. Given this, our chances of survival may actually be over 0%. The Beastmen attacked us, but the garrison carried again, so that shit was boring. After 19 extremely uneventful turns, we finally have a full army of beautiful Squigs. The angry dwarves are relatively close, so I attack them first. Their army of cowards retreated to the safety of their settlement, which is going to be extremely painful to deal with. Every siege battle I fight cuts a few hours off of my lifespan, but this one? This one took a month. I attacked all of their gates at once to catch them off guard and capture all of their control points quickly. What I didn't consider though is that squigs lack both arms and any significant amount of mass, so it took them an extremely long time to knock down the gates. Once they finally did though, things got much, much worse. I inadvertently put these poor fuckers in a perfect position to get absolutely demolished by the grudge throwers. After that, I took great care to avoid letting the squigs get squished, and abused the dwarves' complete lack of mobility to devour all of their units that we could isolate. Because we took such an immense amount of damage early on though, the shorts simply kept fighting, and we had to slowly, painfully, take both of their main control points to capture their city. Oh thank god. Oh my god, that was so painful. That was a bad one, holy shit. Although we took a monumental amount of damage, we didn't lose any units, and they are very dead. This settlement is quite important, as we can build a statue of the fattest goblin in existence here to get an extremely overpowered leadership buff for all of our armies. Now we didn't wipe out the angry dwarves here, they still have one settlement, but I couldn't be bothered to deal with that shit, so I outsourced it to Azag. For all intents and purposes, the first stage of our glorious takeover is complete. Zufbar attacked us with a mediocre army, so we ate them. They used the brilliant strategy of splitting their army in half. Luckily, we're approximately five times as fast as them, so we just went around them, murdered this half of their army, then murdered the other half of their army. As a wise wolf once told me, any real estate is free real estate as long as you kill the previous owners. This ingenious maneuver is yet to fail me, and it's the primary way I build massive amounts of wealth to fund my idiotic missions. Like and share for more Squigma grind set tips. The Greenskins have an entire mechanic built upon the legal, ethical acquisition of property after the unfortunate deaths of the previous owners. Naturally, this is called a... <gasps> On top of making our attacks deal 10% more damage for 20 turns, we also get free armies of unemployed degenerates who are only really valuable as extra food for the squigs. This was the perfect opportunity to continue the downfall of the shorts. We declared our against the petty shorts because their leader, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, insists on taking this large book with him everywhere just to mock our inability to read. Oh, and he's also significantly responsible for the near-complete genocide of Squigkind. We've been using some of our legitimately acquired funding to build up a second army, which I immediately used to steal a few of their settlements. After witnessing the glory of the Squigs, and losing every single one of their armies, these pitiful goblins decided to join our wonderful faction. They made a great snack for the squigs, but more importantly, they already had a squig recruitment building set up over here. Now, this may be miles away from our main territory, but it should be safe enough to start recruiting a third army, which we can then use to confuse and bewilder the shorts with a multi-front assault. Now, I considered keeping the Wa armies, I really did, but my unchecked masochism and the sanctity of the challenge compelled me to disband them. 
This wouldn't be a big deal if I wasn't about to attack Thorgrim Grudgebearer and his full army sitting in a settlement with a garrison. This is a lot of dwarves. Our diabolical scheme to win this battle was to put some squigs behind them. They entered a weird sort of horseshoe formation, and as per usual, we just waited until they left some units vulnerable on the edge of their line, then ate them. The rest of them didn't appreciate that, so we were forced to fight them as well. But how do you defeat an enemy with more armor, health, melee attack, melee defense, leadership, and weapon strength than you? You charge them. Constantly. On all sides. Until they drown under the glorious tide of squeaks. We had no way to kill their lord, so we just didn't. That coward ran away on his... Wait, what the fuck are they just carrying him? <laughs> Ah, what a brilliant strategy. They went into Force March, took attrition for no reason, then stayed in Force March and just came back to where they started. Although they may be extremely dumb, stupid, and perhaps even short-sighted, Zufbar has a lot of fucking helicopters. And each one of those helicopters has big fucking guns and lots of fucking ammo. Now the squigs are quite good at hopping, but they can't jump a hundred feet straight up into the air, so we're entirely incapable of killing these horrific metal beasts. The only thing we can do here is kill every single one of their grounded units, which forces their flying units to either retreat or land and get eaten alive. This beautiful map allows us to place a line of squigs directly behind the front line of the dwarves. This is tremendous, because we can immediately attack the quarrelers that the warriors are trying to defend. Then, as soon as the quarrelers retreat, we can charge the warriors in the rear and kill them as well. This was immaculately effective, aside from the small fact that the helicopter were turning the squigs into orange pudding at an extremely alarming rate. After killing 90% of their army, their lord and heroes simply refused to die, so the poor little squigs just had to sit there and get blown into smithereens one by one. After every single surviving squig in our army developed PTSD, our lord finally managed to kill their last few ground units, and the metal dragons flew away. They got over 1500 gold value on average across those four units. That's a lot. That's an insane amount. Zufbar may not have been one of the major factions that we're trying to destroy, but devouring them was certainly still satisfying. After another battle against Karaza Karak that definitely should have been harder than it was, our third army was finally ready for action. But first, we finished the research for scrap upgrades, which give the squigs plus 15% speed and 15 armor, making them some of the fastest units in the entire game. The dwarves made what is quite possibly the worst formation that I have ever seen, so we simply devoured them. With our war against the petty shorts going so well, I'm sure there's absolutely nothing that could threaten us. Other than this. Belagar here is strength rank 1, but he's over there and I'm over here, so I'm absolutely certain that this won't come back to haunt me later. The Karaza Karak heads still have their largest, most dangerous stronghold, and we need to steal it from them. For some unfathomable reason, they left their army outside of this stronghold rather than inside it, so we don't need to worry about any siege bullshit and we can actually just kill them. What we do need to worry about, though, is that they have a lot of longbeards, who are both very upset by the arguably horrific war crimes that the squigs have committed against them, and extremely difficult to kill. Their smaller army wasn't too hard to deal with, but their larger one came charging down this hill ready to slaughter all of our fragile little squigs. Instead of dying, we simply ran away from them slowly. Then, once our second army arrived, we charged them. A lot. We broke their left flank fairly quickly, then killed their range units, then charged those stubborn longbeards in the rear, down the same hill that they tried to use against us. A handful of turns later, the petty dwarves were destroyed. I, for one, feel like there's a solid moral to this tale. Reading is bad. Now that we are completely, definitively, 100% done with the normal dwarves, forever, we can focus on the far more interesting Chaos Dwarfs. These angry little fuckers are essentially just dwarves that have allowed corporations to purchase politicians and run their government. They exploit child labor, steal resources from third world nations, and pollute the environment so thoroughly that not a single tree can grow within a hundred miles of their settlements. All of that is to say that they are definitely the good guys here. For declaring war on the Chaos Dwarves, we got a very nice alliance with some very trustworthy rats, who definitely won't betray us the second that it's advantageous for them. The Chaos Shorts attacked us. Wait, those aren't dwarves. You see, the Chaos Dwarves have made a groundbreaking discovery. Both workers and soldiers are much, much cheaper if you simply don't pay them. 
through a highly motivating incentive structure wherein the hobgoblins that follow orders don't get brutally murdered most of the time, they've increased their quarterly profits by an absurd margin. The only thing they've failed to consider is that these hobgoblins lack armor, weapons, or anything else that's unpleasant to eat, and they're small enough to fit into our squig's mouths, so we destroyed their entire army in a matter of seconds. One very minor inconvenience to allying with the rats is that they've spread horrible, deadly plagues to all of our settlements. Fortunately, our settlements are bad anyway, so it doesn't really matter as long as our armies don't get infected. On top of our primary mission of killing everyone that's shorter than us, Skarsnik also has a secondary objective. Carrick Eight Peaks is his rightful home that he certainly didn't steal from Belagar Ironhammer, and it's time to take it back. These mutinous gits betrayed Skarsnik and stole it right out from under him, so we'll need to make them dead. They have a, frankly, terrifying amount of anti-large here, though. The orc biggins, the boar boys, and even a gigantic spider that looks more than capable of eating all of the squigs. This is the one situation where Skarsnik is actually good in combat, because they sent up their large units with anti-large first, but Skarsnik is a small unit with anti-large, so he absolutely destroyed them. From there, it was just a super micro-heavy battle where we destroyed them surprisingly easily. These are our current stats versus our baseline stats before we buff the shit out of the squigs. We may not yet be the strongest cavalry that the world has ever seen, but we're getting damn close. For capturing Carrick 8 Peaks, we get no real bonuses. We just lost this debuff, but at least no one's coming to take it back or anything like that. That could be bad. To test just how strong we are now, I tried Skarsnik's quest battle. The result? Yes. We do definitely want to avoid cannons, though. I'm not sure if it's related to the fact that the squigs are shaped like cannonballs, but the cannons hurt. A lot. Drazoath the Ashen attacked us with a fairly terrible army. Will this be hard? Yes, absolutely. But we just kill everything other than Drazoath the Ashen, and then eventually he'll just run away. At least that's what I'm hoping to do here. That plan would have been great if it worked. It turns out that Drazoath here isn't just strong, he is absurdly overpowered. These are his abilities. All of them are strong, and combined they make him more or less immortal. Unfortunately, he wasn't even the strongest thing that they had going for them, though. The Amera- <coughs> <laughs> uh, Chaos Dwarves have access to intercontinental ballistic missiles. Fortunately, the first one was aimed squarely at their own laborers, presumably to dissuade unionization. But the second one... You see, I absolutely could have avoided this, but I assumed that they had only one use of it, and I completely missed the large, conspicuous circle surrounding five of my units. After that, both my morale and the squigs were completely shattered, and the remaining squigs simply refused to fight Drazoath, instead opting to run for their lives every time he came within 100 meters of them. Despite killing half of their army and eating the other half, we still lost this battle and most of our squigs. Drazoath then attacked us again, and he absolutely would have killed us in a real battle, but the autoresolve showed mercy for once, and allowed me to sacrifice my entire army to kill that one dude. As I went to give Skarsnik's army their scrap upgrades... That's not the button I meant to click. I meant to click this button. I just lost three units for no reason. <laughs> I can't recruit them anywhere near here. Fuck. Oh, cannibalism. It seems like it's inescapable no matter what faction I play in this godforsaken game. The one constant is cannibalism. Wurzag got absolutely dumpstered by Belagar's endless hordes, but at least that made him willing to join our faction. The only problem is that Belagar is still very much trying to murder us, and now we're a lot closer to him. We can recruit a ton over here though, as even though we have three armies halfway across the map killing the Chaos Dwarves, we now have a fuck ton of gold after that confederation. They have a lot of other armies here though, that's, that's, that's three more armies that are coming over, that's four more armies that are coming over, that is six total armies. Six motherfucking armies of dwarves. Um, okay. In our hour of greatest need, I reached across the space-time continuum into Baldur's Gate 3 to request the assistance of our beautiful orc bards. They took plentiful pity on our perilous plight, and their phenomenal performance imparted upon us a prodigious plus 15% campaign movement range faction-wide. Now, we currently have one army of squigs here, with a level 1 lord against six armies of dwarves. It'll be at least five turns until we can get another full army here, so it's time to get to work. This has just given me a chance. This formation is very bad. Okay, okay! We win this well! 
Don't even need the cycle charge or anything. We just fucking murdered them with that first charge. Heroic victory. Absolutely glorious. Oh my god. 145 losses out of our 900. And we killed every one of them. Their second army attacked us over the end turn. But although they have highly experienced units, we now have a mostly full army. So we made short work of them. That was very good, but this is very bad. These three armies seem pretty intent on staying together after what I did to their comrades, but I have a downright diabolical scheme to make sure that they have a very bad day. I targeted this army because it's primarily comprised of ranged units that we can kill quite quickly. We took a fair bit of damage on the approach, but as soon as we hopped into their artillery, it turned into an absolute massacre. Now, we could have stayed and fought their second army as well, but we have no reason to. <laughs> that would have been far too greedy even for Scarsnake, so we just fucked off to fight another day. A few turns later, the dwarves got their sixth and final army to reinforce and attacked us with three full, good, experienced armies. I have a few hours in Total Warhammer 2 and 3, perhaps even several, but this is my favorite battle ever. We started out by surrounding the first army and charging them on all sides, which was highly effective as per usual. We did take quite a bit of damage though, and we didn't manage to finish off the first army before the other two started coming onto the battlefield. This would have been absolutely terrible if they didn't enter the battle single file one at a time. We backed off, then charged back in and killed a bunch more of them. After that, they still have almost two full armies remaining. But one big thing is about to change. They ran out of melee units in their army on the right, so we just murdered their quarrelers and artillery the second they came onto the battlefield. This was a wonderful little slaughter, but we still need to deal with their third army, and the balance of power is bad. They had an actually decent formation, other than having their range units blobbed up behind them. So we just went around most of them, devoured the quarrelers, then charged the rest of their army down the hill while also wall camping their remaining artillery units. Because the army losses are partially based on the total proportion of each army that has died, and 90% of them were very fucking dead, they routed even though the balance of power was still even. Their unbreakable ghost hero took a long time to kill, but in the end, we achieved the most glorious victory in the history of squig kind. We lost zero units of squigs and wiped out the vast majority of all three of their armies. Each unit of our squigs had an average of 2,000 gold value and around 200 kills, which is just disgusting. On the other front, though, I had an extremely easy time wiping out the rest of the Chaos Dwarves. And as I captured their last settlement, my heart swelled with pride, knowing that I had secured the squigs a place in this cold, brutal world only for them to immediately starve to death after this challenge because we eradicated their primary food source. <laughs> click the button. What the fuck are you still doing here if you haven't clicked the button? Click it now! Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members as always. My next Total Warhammer video will be Slayer only, where the miserable short bastards will get a chance to redeem themselves. I have a few other cool ideas that I might end up doing first though. A couple potentially impossible Baldur's Gate 3 challenges and a brutally painful Goblin Tribe playthrough of RimWorld. That's all for now though. Thanks for watching. Peace out.